If the evening news causes you stress, then today's Arkansas Live is just for you. As a matter of fact, all this week, we're gonna take a look at not only how you can survive these times we're living in, but how you can thrive. It's God's plan for man, and it's coming up next as Arkansas Live starts right now. Just before I came down uh, to the TV studio, uh, I received an email from a viewer, and I really appreciate this, uh, uh, this question and this opportunity. And they said, you know, I've watched all of the uh, Christian programs, Christian television uh, relating to the times that we're in, uh, the elections, the outcome, everything related to these times, the COVID, blah, blah, blah. But they said, I still would like your opinion. I'd like to know what you think about where we are at this time and what we can expect and what we need to do. Well, that's exactly what I'm gonna talk about this week. But I've titled uh, these uh, programs this week, God's Plan for Man. And this is so important. Once you realize, according to the scriptures, who God is, who you are, God's plan for you that he has, and that he's always had, and where you fit in his plan. It takes all of the fear, all the anxiety, all the worry. It takes all of that conspiracy theory. It takes all of the edge off of everything. I remember when uh, Jeannie was um, sharing her testimony. Oh my goodness, this was 30 years ago. We were in a car wreck. A big old tire truck hit us from the rear, knocked the car 38 feet, broke her back in three places. The devil was trying to kill us because that's when we were building VTN, and he, he didn't want VTN <laughs> on the air. And I remember what she said when uh, the ambulance came and took her to the emergency room. She said, I had absolutely no fear. None whatsoever. She said, I knew beyond any shadow of doubt that my Father God was going to take care of me. I knew it. I didn't have to believe it. I didn't have to have faith. Now, she did believe it, and she did have faith. But she said, I knew my Heavenly Father was going to take care of me, and He did. And she's been well uh, ever since supernaturally. Now, the first thing we want to do is go over to Genesis chapter 1, and let's read verses uh, 26 uh, through 29, and let's, let's take a look at what the Bible says, not, not speculation, not conjecture, not my opinion, uh, not hype, but what the Bible says about God's plan for man. What was God's plan? What is God's plan? God's plan has not changed. And you know, when Adam sinned, did not stop God's plan. It merely delayed it a few thousand years, but God's plan is still the same, and it will be manifested. Okay, look at Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. God said, let us, referring to the Trinity, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, let us make man in our image after our likeness. Now, let's just stop there for a minute because this is something that you've got to be settled on. You, you've got to know this. There are cults, not occult, which is Satan worship, witchcraft, but cults, C-U-L-T-S, cults, which are false religions, um, most of them are bloodless religions, which means they don't require the blood of Jesus, the blood of Christ, uh, which was shed abroad, you know, on, on Calvary for our sin. Uh, it takes the blood of Jesus to overpower 
to overpower sin and as a substitutionary sacrifice uh, for man's sin. And cults don't normally, um, how would I say, they don't normally lift up the blood of Jesus. Normally they're turned inward. They're about man's ability to heal himself, cleanse himself, etc. And there are cults that and I won't mention the names because it's not my purpose to stir anything up, but there are cults that have gotten this, just for this one verse, all wrong. Uh, and they will refer to Adam or man as uh, Adam God or man God, the God man. I, I heard one statement not too long ago saying that when God created Adam, he re reproduced himself. Well, that's kind of a half truth. What the scripture says, now, cause, cause I want to make this very clear. There's only one God man and that's Jesus Christ. Jesus is God in the flesh. The Bible says, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus is God in flesh. He was God taking upon himself humankind. It says that in Philippians. It tells us a lot about this. We'll read some of these scriptures. But I want to make this a, a established fact. Adam was not God. God did not recreate himself in Adam. In fact, it's the opposite. The Bible says that Adam was made in the image and likeness of God, not the other way around. Now, let me describe to you and define this word image. The word image as it's used there in Genesis 1:26, a visual representation a likeness. Now, keep in mind, God had created the animal kingdom. He created the, uh, the vegetation. He created the stars, the solar system. And then he said, let's make man in our image. Let's distinguish the difference between man who is made in the image and likeness of God and lower forms of life like animals and so forth. So there was a comparison here when God said, let's make man in our image. So man was made in the spiritual God class of beings, but, but man was not God. Adam was not God. There's only one man that qualified to be God, and that's Jesus. So get that point right first. We're made in the image, the likeness, the similitude of God, but we're not God. We're not God reproduced in human form. We're made in the image and likeness of God. We are spirit. We have souls and we live in bodies. We are a triune being like God, God, the father, God, the son, God, the Holy Spirit. We are like him in that we are in the image and likeness of God. Uh, let's go on. Let's go over and look at some other scriptures. Let's go over to Ephesians chapter 4 and let's look at verse 24. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 24. And that you put on the new man. Uh, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. Now here's a, another visual um, representation for this man, Adam. It said that he created him um, in righteousness and true holiness, representing God. None of the animals were created in righteousness and true holiness. Only Adam, only the man, only the species of being that is in God's class of being. 
animals, vegetables, solar system, they, they are not in the God class of beings. The animals are just body and soul. Uh, to my knowledge, there's nowhere in the Bible where it supports that they have spirits or there are spirits. They're just soul, breath, and uh, bodies, physical bodies. But man is made in the image and likeness of God. So man is the visual representation of God himself. Now, the psalmist David in Psalm 8, he did ask, what is man? That thou art so mindful of him and that you have given him authority or dominion over all the works of your hands. Now, he didn't do that for any other uh, species that he created. He didn't give the animal kingdom. He, he only gave man specific dominion and authority over his creation. Because to rule the creation, you had to know that the creation was a, a spiritual creation. It wasn't just physical. It was a spiritual creation. And you had to, you remember God told Adam to watch over the garden, to till it and to keep it. That was, <laughs> that was not just hoeing the weeds. That was not just, you know, keeping it weed free. It was talking to it. It was spiritually discerning. If Adam had done his job properly, the serpent would have never gotten in the garden. The serpent would have never been able to tempt Eve if Adam had done his job because he was created in God's class of beings. He wasn't God, but he was created in that class of beings where he was a visual representation of God himself. Now, let's go back to Genesis uh, chapter 1 and let's keep reading there where we, where we started, Genesis 1. Uh, 26. Let's make man in our image after our likeness and let them, the species of man, have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, over the cattle, over all the earth, every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. What comes to me, and you remember when Jesus was fishing uh, or his disciples were fishing and he walks up and he said, <laughs> have you told all night? And they said, yes, we have. We hadn't, kept, we hadn't caught a thing. Now, what did Jesus do? He didn't tell them to use a new lure or bait. Of course, they used a net. And he said, cast your net on the other side. That was the word of God. That was the spiritual instruction. Same with Peter when he was walking to Jesus on the water. What did Jesus say to Peter when he began to sing? Come, Lord, if it's you bid me to come to you, come. That's the spiritual dominion, the word of God. So he told the disciples to cast their net on the other side and they had a boat load, net breaking load of fish, had to call their partners with them in other boats to bring this load of fish in. So there's a spiritual attribute to this dominion that God had given man. It wasn't just pulling weeds. It, I heard a preacher say, man, this was years ago before I even had a lot of this knowledge. And he said that, you know, you make such a big deal about being redeemed. He said, Adam was nothing but a glorified weed puller. And so when he got redeemed, he got redeemed from being a weed puller. But now that's not what the scripture says. <laughs> the, the scripture didn't say that God made Adam a glorified weed puller. Besides that, this man didn't understand the scriptures because in the garden, before the fall, there were no weeds. There was nothing to de-weed <laughs> because the curse hadn't come. So you understand the scriptures, you'll understand more about God's plan for man, God's plan for you, and it hasn't changed. Therefore, when things begin to happen around you in the culture uh, morally, politically, economically, you won't fall to pieces. You won't say, alas, alas, wring your hands. What are we going to do? Because you know that God's plan 
is being carried out. So he said, let's make man in our image after our likeness and let man have dominion, the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, the cattle over all the earth, every creeping thing that creeps upon the earth. So God created man in his own image. Now here we're going to get into another uh, mind boggler, uh, another opportunity uh, for you to say, ouch, or oh me, or whatever. Just keep your rocks in the bag because it's all going to turn out all right uh, at the end. Notice he said, God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Next sentence. Here it is. Are you ready? Male and female created he them. Now, I always had a problem when I, when I heard people say that, you know, uh, God is as much female as he is male. Uh, and, you know, this was the evidence that God carried the DNA for female as much as he carried the DNA for male. That's misleading. It didn't say that God was female. didn't say he was male and female. didn't say both genders came out of him. It said he created man, male and female. He created, uh, how would you say, giraffes, male and female. He created elephants, male and female. Uh, he created uh, cats and dogs, male and female. That didn't make God female. Uh, you, you really need to be careful in, when you try to force something to support your personal belief. Just stick with the word. You don't have to embellish. You don't have to speculate. You don't have to exaggerate. It said God created them, created him, male and female created he them. So he made the male of the species, the female of the species. There's no indication or reference that, that made to be God being female or God being male. If you really want to take that to the extreme, that creates a, a gender problem. And there will be those that would twist this and use it to support uh, their transgendered, um, mixed up way of thinking. It's real simple. Just stay with the word. God created man in his image and likeness. So that means Adam is a spiritual being. He is in the God class of beings. And he made man male and female, just like he made all the other creations that he created, male and female, for one primary purpose reproduction. That's the reason for it. He made them male and female so they could reproduce. Two males don't reproduce. Two females don't reproduce. He made them male and female so they could reproduce themselves. They're already made in the image and likeness of God. But now, look at the rest of it. And he blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, replenish the, replenish the earth and subdue it. Have dominion over the fish of the sea, the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moves upon the earth. So that was the, that was the original creation. That was the original purpose that God had in mind. He, he, his plan was far-reaching and eternal, and he started by creating this man, the species of man. He started by creating him in his image because he knew that this plan would not work if the man that he created wasn't in his class of beings. Now, let me go on and, and use some other terminology. The first thing that he said about this man was is he was going to give him dominion. The word dominion, uh, I guess, can be defined in 
several ways, but basically it means ownership or rulership over the creation. So I understand that people have a problem, the difference between ownership and stewardship. And I'll, I'll share with you how God revealed it to me that I think will help you. Let's just take the word owner and let's take the word son. Now, we, through Christ, are sons of God. Adam, you could say, was a son of God. He was created in the image and likeness of God. But we, through Christ, have been made sons of God. Okay. If I am a son, then I am an heir. Now, if I am just a steward, then I'm not an heir. But if I'm a son, I'm an heir. And through Christ, I have been made a son. So he created man in his image to take ownership of his creation. Psalm 8, that's what the psalmist said. Who is man? You're so mindful of him that you've given him dominion, authority, ownership over the work of your hands. Now, I've always heard this definition, and you probably have too, and I'm not being argumentative or contentious, that stewardship simply means to uh, manage the resources of another. That's a very simple and primary definition, but it leaves out a very important part. Stewardship is to manage anything, whether it belongs to you or whether it belongs to somebody else. There are millions of people that are in financial straits today because they have not been good stewards of what they've been given or what they have, what they've worked for. They haven't been good stewards of their inheritance. They haven't been good stewards of what they have um, invested or, or been given or inherited. So I, I, I don't... If, if I look at the word stewardship, it doesn't just apply to managing somebody else's resources. It applies to managing my own. Now, when my father died, my earthly father died, he left a will and a trust fund for me and my sister. Everything he'd worked for all his life became ours, the trust fund. Now, you can't touch the trust fund uh, in its uh, uh, capital. You can borrow against it. You can live off the interest of it, but you can't. You can, nobody can ever squander the trust fund itself. It's passed on through generation after generation after generation. He learned that from a Jewish friend of his, a businessman he was in business with. And so everything that my father owned, I now own. He had a 62 Corvette that he was restoring. He loved cars. When he died, he sent, or before he died, he made plans. He told me he sent me the 62 Corvette. The title was made out to me. It was now mine. It was his. But now it's mine. I own it. I have the authority. I have the right. I have the challenge of being a good steward over that automobile. Now, I wasn't as gung-ho on automobiles as he was. So I sold the car and took the money and endowed our college library. Was I a good steward? Yes. Was it mine to do what I wanted with it? Yes. So I owned it. Yeah, but it was your father's. Yes, but he left it to me. He willed it to me. I became his son by conception when he and my mother uh, conceived me. My mother conceived me in her womb. I was born of my mother, and I was a product of my father and my mother. I became their son. Therefore, I became the legal heir to everything that they had. It was theirs. Daddy worked hard for it, the greatest generation. Then it became mine. So it, I inherited it. By the same token, I inherited Abraham's blessing. 
there are, there are many scriptures in the Bible where God talks about stewardship and he, he always includes being a good steward of what you own. So stewardship does not just apply to managing the assets of another. It, 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 uh, it applies to managing the assets that have been given to you, that belong to you. Now let's go a little step further. Son, owner. Servant, steward. If I'm a servant, if I'm a steward, then I am managing and taking care of the assets of another. But I can also be a good steward in managing my own assets. But if I'm a son, I'm an heir. And, and spiritually speaking, I'm an heir through Christ. <laughs> I'm an owner and I'm a son. Now, how do I become a son? Because I told the Lord one time, I said, Lord, look at this. Yeah, I've inherited my dad's everything that he worked a lifetime for. And I didn't do one thing to deserve any of this. I didn't earn any of it. I didn't make any of it. And, and yet it, it's now mine. I said, the only thing that qualified me for being an heir was I was born his son. And the Lord spoke to me and said, yeah, and that's what qualified you to be my heir. You were born again. Whew, it was so strong. So I become an owner through the new birth. I am a steward, a servant for what I do. Let me explain it to you this way. This is the way the Lord said it to me. Maybe this will help you because we're going to come back to this tomorrow. An owner, a son, is who I am. A servant, a steward, is what I do. Did you get it? Write it down, it'll help you. An owner, a son, is who I am. By inheritance, by decree. A servant or a steward is what I do with what I own. We'll stop here today and we'll pick this up here tomorrow. Be sure and join me for Arkansas Live. Remember, Jesus is Lord of Arkansas and wherever you're watching in the world, too. Send your questions, comments, and testimonies to Happy Caldwell at Post Office Box 26207, Little Rock, Arkansas, 72221, or email happycaldwell at vtntv.com. Remember to follow VTN on Facebook at VTN Your Arkansas Christian Connection and follow Happy Caldwell on Twitter at Happy underscore Caldwell. VTN is on Roku. Search VTN in the channel store and add us to your lineup. Today's episode is available to watch on demand at VTNTV.com and click watch. You can also watch VTN via live stream at VTNTV.com.